Hey guys, welcome back to the Docker series. Containers are ephemeral, meaning when a container is created from an image, it can be destroyed and new containers can be built from the same Docker image and put in place with a minimum of configuration. And when a container is deleted, any data written to that container will be lost. But what if you want to persist the data of a container like our MongoDB to do items? That can be achieved with Docker volumes. Let's try to understand how Docker volume solves the problem of persisting container data with hands-on. So without any further delay, let's get started. As we discussed, when you build an image from Docker file, for every instruction in Docker file, a new layer is created. All these layers are read-only, meaning we cannot write any data to these layers. And when you execute docker run for this image, a new container is created with a new writable layer. Any data that is created within the container is written to this writable layer. For example, when you run the MongoDB in the container, any data that you want to store, in our case, to-do items are stored in this writable layer. But there are a couple of problems here. It's difficult to use this container data by another process as the container is fully isolated. And when you delete the container, this writable layer is also deleted and the data associated with this container is also deleted. So our data is lost. There is no way to get the data back. Let's see that in action. We have our MongoDB container up and running that we created in the Docker networking video of this series. And these are the to-do items that we stored in this database. Let's try to delete this MongoDB container and create it again. To delete the container, First, we need to stop the containers. Docker stop MongoDB. And we will do Docker RM MongoDB. Now the container is deleted. Let's try to create the MongoDB container again. This was the command that we used to create the MongoDB container. Let's hit enter. Awesome. The MongoDB container is now up and running. Let's see if the data that we created previously is there or not. If you see the to do database does not exist here. So when you delete a container, the data associated with that container is also lost. This issue can be fixed with Docker volumes. Let's say on our host, we have three containers running. For example, one is Mongo container, second is Postgres container, and the third one is MySQL container. And we have our local file system where we can create our directories. With Docker volumes, we specify that mount local directory to container data directory. So whenever you write any data to the container, it also gets written to the host and vice versa. With this approach, even when you delete the containers, the data on the host will not be deleted. When you create the containers again, as you mount the same directory onto the container, entire data is written to the container on startup and you will have your data ready in your container. You can compare it to backup and restore for simplicity. Enough of theory. Let's do some hands on now. We can create the Docker volume with Docker volume create and volume name. Let's give the Mongo data as the volume name as we are storing the Mongo data to this volume. We can list out the volumes with Docker volume ls. If you see the volume that we created just now is here. We can also filter the docker volumes with hyphen f. Let's give the name as filter criteria. Mongo data. If you see, we got only Mongo data. We can also see to which directory this volume stores the data. Docker inspect volume Mongo data. If you see, this volume writes the data to this directory. Don't worry, we will get into this directory and how the MongoDB data is stored. This type of volumes are called named volumes as we are giving name to the volume. When you don't give any name to the volume while creating, Docker automatically assigns some random unique name to the volume. Docker volume create. Here I'm not giving any name, just hit enter. If you see with a unique random name, the volume is created. We can verify that with Docker volume ls here is the volume that we just created as we are not giving any name to these volumes 
this type of volumes are called anonymous volumes awesome we created our volume volumes can be shared meaning we can use this volume for any container we would want to also we can mount multiple volumes in a single container it's like mapping your container folder to the folder of your host in simple terms now let us create the mongodb container again with this volume before that let's stop and delete the mongodb container docker stop mongodb let's remove it with the docker rm mongodb now let's create the mongodb before that we should specify which volume to use the volume can be specified with hyphen v flag volume name is mongo hyphen data colon here we should specify which directory of the container should be stored in this volume mongodb stores the data in slash data slash db directory with this we are specifying that the data which is there in the slash data slash db directory of the container should be stored in the mongo iphone data volume if you are using postgres database the data is stored in the slash var slash lib slash postgres sql slash data and if you are using mysql the data is stored in slash var slash lib slash mysql directories volumes are not only meant for databases volumes can be used for any stateful applications let's hit enter now the mongodb container is created now let's create some data with the spring boot apis that we deployed using docker this will save the data to the mongo database that we just created let's create a to-do item make sure to use volumes for any stateful application now let's stop and delete the container docker stop mongodb docker rm mongodb well our mongodb container is now deleted now let's create the mongodb container with the previous command that we used please note that here we are using volume now let's hit enter now the expectation is that as we used volumes whatever the data that we created previously should not be deleted Let's verify that by refreshing this Mongo Express page. If you see the to-do database is still here and the document that we created is still here. So with the help of Docker volumes, we can persist the container data even if the container gets deleted. Let's try to see where and how the volume data is stored in the Docker host. If we inspect the container Docker inspect MongoDB, we can see the mount section here. As you see, the data is stored in this directory. Let's get into this directory. On Linux, we can find this directory. But on Mac or Windows, if you try to get into this directory, you will see an error. This is because when you install Docker desktop, a small VM is created and all the data related to Docker like images, containers and volumes are stored in this VM. So to see this data, we should get into this VM. To get into the VM, we should execute this command if you see the cursor we are in the docker vm now let's get into this docker directory cd and let's list the directories if you see the containers networks volumes and the images are stored here you can find all the data related to the docker in this directory now let's try to get into the volumes directory list down this is our volume let's get into this directory for every volume a new directory is created in this volumes directory and in the volume directory there's a folder called underscore data now let's try to list down the files in this directory if you see all the mongodb collection information is here let's come out of this docker vm exit awesome when you run the container, if you don't give any volume here, an anonymous volume is created and used. Instead of giving volume, we can give the path of our local host. So here, instead of storing the container data in the VM, we are storing it in the directory of our system. This concept is called bind mounts. To persist the container's data, we can use the volumes or we can use the any directory of our system directly volumes are stored as part of the host file system which is managed by docker 
and volumes are the best way to persist the data in docker volumes can be managed by the docker cli just like we created docker create command whereas if you use bind mounts the data can be stored anywhere on the system and these directories are not managed by docker cli these are like any other directories on your system you can try this bind mounts on your system and see if the data is getting stored in this directory instead of in your volume we can delete our volume with docker volume rm and our volume name if you see the error volume is in use just like you cannot delete a container that is running you cannot delete the volume which is used by any container so to delete this volume we should delete the mongodb container because that container is using this volume docker stop mongodb docker rm mongodb now the container is deleted now let's try to delete the volume the volume is deleted we can verify with docker volume ls please note that whenever you delete the container the volume is not removed you should delete the volume manually now whatever the data is stored in the mongodb is lost because we deleted the volume so be careful when you delete your volume as a practice you can run the jenkins with docker using volumes and see if the jobs that you created in jenkins persist between the runs i hope you followed along with me and got a fair understanding of how to persist the data of a container my name is pavanil tepu and i thank you very much for watching this video if you liked it please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel do not miss any updates